Name a better comeback than Ponzi schemes. Used to be illegal, but in 2022, they're flying higher than oil prices. More common than a single guy at a board ape convention, they have exploded in popularity, especially among our ruling class, the billionaires. Which is why today we are investigating yet another billion dollar Ponzi scheme. And no, I'm not talking about Do Kwan's terrible decisions. That's totally last month. Today we're talking about USDD. That's a double D, as in double the dumb people who believe in it. And like all Ponzi schemes, this one says it's different. Luna failed after it offered 20% a year and attracted billions of dollars in investments. USDD is changing the game by offering something different, offering double the amount of interest, nearly 39.6% per year, according to their website. And they claim it's risk-free because of course they claim that, right? Now we've seen this movie a thousand times, but let's pretend to be a government for a second and give this Ponzi scheme the benefit of the doubt. How are they claiming such a high risk-free return? How's it possible? And who's behind it? Well, it turns out to be a billionaire named Justin Sun. He's quite the controversial figure in his own right. According to The Verge, he fled multiple countries under fear of prosecution, and a former employee alleges that they were engaged in, quote, insider trading all the time, which, you know, in my opinion, is just too much. Some of the time, sure, who doesn't enjoy a couple hours of insider trading? But all the time, it's just greedy. Now, when Justin isn't allegedly insider trading all the time, he has another job, which is as an ambassador for the country of Granada, which gives him diplomatic immunity in Switzerland, which doesn't really matter except for the fact that it grants him the title of His Excellency for some reason, which he really enjoys being called in interviews. Uh, you, your Excellency, I... Yeah, it's kind of crunchy. But we're going to look beyond Justin Sun's colorful past today and ask the real question. What is USDD all about? Is it truly a Ponzi scheme? Is it something completely legit? Well, Justin admits that, quote, he came up with the idea for USDD after witnessing Terra's dramatic ascent. In other words, they made a lot of money, now he wants a piece. But his timing was unfortunate. He launched USDD only a few days before Terra Luna's collapse, which obviously isn't a great look. Despite that, he still wants to convince people that his coin is going to be different. He claims that just because one goes bad doesn't mean they're all bad. It's kind of like real estate. I believe uh, Luna's fail is kind of like, you know, recently in China's real estate, uh, Evergrande, they're using too much like leverage uh, in a very short period of time. So according to Justin, UST and Luna failed because they grew too quick and were over leveraged. And he's not going to suffer the same mistake. But before we get into the differences, we have to address the similarities between US Terra and USDD because there are a lot. They both claim to be algorithmic stablecoins, which just means they rely on arbitrage to keep their value at $1. They both also offer insane rates of return, and both of them acknowledge this is probably unsustainable in the long term. But that's where the similarities stop and the differences begin, because obviously, US Terra has collapsed after accumulating billions of dollars. USDD, on the other hand, is much younger, only about a month old, and already has a market cap of $700 million or so. Additionally, USDD doesn't actually work as an algorithmic stablecoin at all yet. Right now, the mechanism for arbitrage is actually turned off, and minting new USDD is only allowed for a small number of whitelisted institutions, such as Alameda Research, among other people. Now, the reason this is important is because it makes USDD safe from the famous algorithmic death spiral, at least for now, because this is only possible when burning and minting is active. So if you're planning to short this coin, probably don't because it's not actually an algorithmic stablecoin yet. Of course, they claim that they will eventually be one when they enable this feature because, of course, they're not that stable until people can arbitrage, which is probably why they're de-pegged from a dollar and instead trade about at 97 cents. But the question this all begs is, why is this worth a dollar at all if it's not really an algorithmic stablecoin? Why isn't it just worthless? Well, the reason for that is something called the Tron DAO Reserve, which claims to back USDD with a bunch of crypto assets. In fact, they not only back them, they say, we've over collateralized. We have more than enough money to back up this USDD. And this is one reason they claim they're different. They're collateralized at 300% and promise they're going to use it to defend their money. They also link the associated addresses that have this $2 billion worth of funds that they say they have. And if this is all true, doesn't that make USDD intrinsically valuable if it really is backed by all this money? That's the logic anyways. I mean, look at this chart they provide. They're the most backed of any coin. 
And some crypto YouTubers even think it's an ultra conservative investment. People should really be thinking of this as an ultra conservative over collateralized stablecoin, not some risky algo staple. So why am I telling you different? Why do I think that this is ultimately a Ponzi scheme? Well, it's simple. They're offering 40% a year on their website of risk-free yield. But if that's not enough for you, let's think about this for a second. They're only over collateralized as long as this coin doesn't get super successful because over time, as more and more people invest in it, they don't just magically get more collateral. Their collateral stays the same, which means that slowly, by their own success, they will become under collateralized and eventually death spiral like every other algo stablecoin. In fact, if they ever reached the success of something like US Terra, they would actually only have about 10% collateralization. Now, it's here that some people might want to stop for a second because you might say, well, that's of course why Justin Sun is so careful in interviews. He says that the growth of USDD needs to be slow. It needs to be organic. He's not in a big hurry. First of all, uh, we need to base on uh, our growth, uh, organic growth, uh, rather than a very short period of time growth with full leverage. I think that that's the first lesson. But this actually doesn't track to reality because USDD has grown extremely fast. They've grown to almost a billion dollars in a little over a month. And it's almost all been minted inorganically by centralized entities. Remember, regular people can't just print USDD. In fact, one of their biggest users is actually none other than Justin Sun himself. That's right, big shocker. The main user of USDD is the creator, Justin Sun. I discovered this when I started investigating his various wallets. See, he minted $40 million on Ethereum and also $40 million on the Binance Smart Chain, but it didn't start there. It originated on his home blockchain of Tron and passed through a bridge contract. Why that's important is because we can backtrace through that bridge contract to find out who on Tron minted all this money. When we trace it back, we get to this account, which I believe is Justin Sun's Tron wallet, or at least one of them. One way we can confirm this is because this wallet is the primary voting stakeholder on another one of Justin Sun's projects, the JustLend DAO. Now, this is a bit of a tangent, but JustLend is a Tron lending platform that claims to be a decentralized autonomous organization. Basically, what that means is they accept community votes in order to decide what to do next. According to their website, if the proposal receives more than 600 million supporting votes, plus takes the majority of votes, it will be passed. So what's the catch? Well, the wallet we just identified as probably Justin Sun, they control exactly 600 million and one votes, which basically means they can always pass literally whatever they want on this DAO, right? Really decentralized, guys. That's what it looks like in 2022. And you can see from their governance page that these votes go basically uncontested. This proposal, for example, has 135 votes against, 600 million for. All of this means we can be pretty confident when we say this is Justin Sun's wallet. And the reason this is so interesting is because of Justin Sun's claims that he's a big fan of decentralization. He actually says that's the whole reason for the need of an algorithmic stablecoin in the first place. I think one of the most uh, important answer, at least to myself, uh, for algorithm stablecoin is we basically want to um, make a decision on our own uh, fate uh, in our own hands. So basically, I think these days, stablecoin is the most uh, centralized part of uh, this decentralized world. That's right. Forget about these centralized entities. The reason we need another algorithmic stablecoin is for decentralization. But like Just Lind, how decentralized is USDD really? We already know that it's tightly controlled by a few whitelisted institutions, but it gets way worse than that. Because now that we have what is nearly certainly Justin Sun's wallet, we can now see how much USDD he himself is responsible for minting. And the answer is 683 million tokens. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the entire sum of tokens they've ever minted is like 723 million, which means that Justin himself has minted 94% of all the tokens in existence. So much for decentralized growth, I guess. See, it turns out this whole project is basically Justin Sun selling to retail traders looking for a quick buck, which brings me to my first theory of what USDD might be used for. Not only do I obviously think this coin is offering unsustainable yield, I think it is also a really clever way for Justin Sun to offload Tron without affecting price. Because let's think about it. 
The wallet we just identified controls $70 million worth of Tron. But if it's sold that on the open market, it, you're never gonna get that. The price is going to plummet, right? But go with me for a second. What if you could burn $1 of Tron and get one USDD, which is how this whole thing works incidentally. And then you sell that USDD for another coin without affecting price like USDC. So long as you could bring in enough people willing to buy your new token USDD by maybe let's say offering them insane yields, you could actually cash out of your Tron without ever affecting the price of Tron. It's one way to actualize gains without tanking your own coin, which would be pretty smart if you ask me, but I have to say, this is speculation at this point. What we know for sure is that USDD is absolutely not decentralized. 94% of it comes from one wallet and its supposed growth hasn't been organic at all. Nothing could be further from the truth. Decentralization in this case is nothing more than a buzzword that is being used to make people feel empowered. Just like DAO was a buzzword for just lend to make people feel a part of something that was controlled by 600 million and one votes. I would highly recommend you guys stay away from this coin. It's a billionaire game copied from a previous billionaire's game that crashed horrendously. I mean, how much more do you really need to know? Stay away from claims that say that this is a safe or conservative bet because that's also what they said about things like Celsius. It's literally a joke. Oh, and by the way, there's a really funny moment in this interview I've been showing you that I wanna play right here. It's when Justin starts talking about this coin being backed by liquidity. Listen closely. I think you'll be able to hear something in the background. Uh, I think in the future, uh, we will be very carefully to handle uh, the liquidity pool and also um, the, the whole market cap of the uh, USDD. Just to be clear, I did not add the siren. It literally went off in the middle of their interview. Anyway, that's basically it. Big thanks to the Twitter user Defiac for helping me with some of this research. And I want to thank all of you for watching.